progress. We shall begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask, <coughs> we ask for your presence to be with us tonight or afternoon, wherever we, whatever time zone we are in. And I uh, pray that you can help me present this study of chronology as it uh, deals with the issues of our current times and give thanks for the, the light that you've been shedding on our path concerning chronology. And uh, I pray that you can do your work that uh, will help convict our others concerning that of the of your the truth of your word and your involvement throughout history as a God that is above um, the, the heavens, that is above and controls all the constellations and the, the stars and the planets and the sun and the moon and those relate to time. And, uh, we know that we are approaching the time when we are soon to come. We do not know the day they are, but um, you can see what the light that you've been unfolding in our path that uh, there's just uh, an abundance of things. You're just giving us things which have been sealed and uh, until this year time. And, and the, this is light that is going to be part of the lottery, and I believe as well. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so uh, this year's study, we are dealing with the last days. We had previously finished in the year 70 AD with the destruction of Jerusalem by Rome. And so from this year point on, uh, we're dealing with the Christian age. And um, the first date I have there is the 10 years of persecution beginning under Diocletian. This relates to Revelation chapter 2, verse 10, where it talks about uh, under the church of Smyrna, that they will have persecution 10 days. And we understand a day for a year. And uh, this represents this year uh, period under Diocletian. Now, there was a... Uh, uh, a sort of law in 311 that allowed persecution to cease uh, for a part of the Roman Empire. And um, I can't remember the emperor's name, but this year one we're marking for the, the whole empire um, in 313 AD was under Constantine. Uh, when, so he had won the battle of Milvian Bridge just a year before. And he uh, apparently had this mystic vision of this year cross in the sign conquer. And that this was related to the cross of Christ. And this year he became like a nominal believer in Christian, in, Christian religion in some way through his wife. And uh, who had sort of an influence on him. On him. So that's sort of a... That's why I have that 313 there as well. Um, 330 AD, then Constantine moves the capital from Rome to Constantinople. This is a fulfillment of the time or 360 years from 31 BC, which was the Battle of Actium. Um, relates to verse 24 of Daniel chapter 11. And then we just have a period here with four trumpets that bring down uh, Western Rome. Uh, the Goths under Alaric, the Vandals under Genseric, the Huns under Attila, and the Heruli under Odiacer. And uh, this is a span of about uh, 
um, 81 years. So this was we find this here uh, in Revelation chapter 8, verses 7 to 12, the first four trumpets. And we understand this is in response to the Sunday law of Constantine, which uh, took place in uh, 321. What about in Revelation 8, 7, 1, 2? That's interesting, yes. <laughs> Didn't know this up. <laughs> and, and that is the first four uh, trumpets. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, interesting. <clears throat> so uh, Theodoric kills Odiacer in uh, 493 AD, and Haver Daniel 7, verse 8. This is relating to the plucking up the little horns as the, the papacy was rising up we have uh, three of the horns uh, of daniel chapter seven being plucked up and this was the heruli tribe and uh, now theodoric he was doing this here under the uh, Encouragement, could we say, of the Emperor Zeno in Constantinople. Um, Theodoric was a threat to Zeno and um, he saw that he was going the other direction from where he was. So Theodoric was based more around modern day Croatia, around that time, uh, that area. So he was going more west. He So that so uh, Zeno very much encouraged and maybe helped Theodoric uh, with this here uh, attack against the Heruli. So you sort of see Rome having a part of it, a uh, part to play. And the Heruli as a tribe did exist for um, some time, maybe afterwards, but uh, generally maybe about 50, 60 years afterwards before they were really totally uh, undistinguishable as a tribe. And um, but we generally not, uh, marked their plucking up in uh, 493. And then in 508, we have the taking away of the daily, which we understand as paganism. And it relates to the, the 1200 and the, sorry, I, 1290 and the 1335 year prophecies. That they begin at this year time. And the understanding is that on the 25th of December, Clovis is baptized into the Catholic uh, religion. <clears throat> and Roman Catholicism then becomes the official religion of the Kingdom of the Franks. And in a sense, they're they're taking away their paganism and uh, but in a sense, it's being baptized. It's still in the Catholic Church, it's, we understand that paganism still continues, but it has been baptized. So that act of Clovis there is quite um, pertinent as a symbol to the daily uh, being taken away, but it's not really done away with, it. it's, it's baptized. Uh, 533. Uh, this is when the papacy made, was made to be head over the entire church by Justinian. Um, and we relate, relate this here to Revelation 13, verse 2, where it talks about uh, the dragon gave the um, church, the Roman Catholic Church, its, its seat, which was, we understand, was the city of Rome. and. Um, power, which we understand, we can relate certainly to uh, that power in some sense uh, being gained uh, during when, when, when Clovis uh, supported, began, began to support the Roman Catholic Church. But the, the power was also given by Rome in a sense in, uh, when Belisarius um, reconquered Rome. 
and 538. So you can maybe tie in that to that power. But the great authority um, is really bestowed here in 533 of that there verse in Revelation 13, verse 2. Uh, 534, we have another horn plucked up and the Vandals. They surrendered to Belisarius. They were in North Africa. So he leaves them then and then proceeds to Rome. And he enters Rome in 536. The Ostrogoths did hold Rome at that their time, but uh, they withdrew when they seen the population didn't. Uh, they, they were quite not, they weren't favorable to the Ostrogoths. So uh, um, they withdrew, but when Belisarius entered into Rome, uh, they're basically almost immediately sieged uh, by Ostrogoths. They came back again and, and uh, besieged Rome. And so that began to take place in 537. It was a siege announced in 538. After a year, the siege ended. And we understand when that siege ended, the Ostrogoths retreated from Rome. We understand that the 1260-year time prophecy then began. And uh, this year now meant that this year decree by Justinian could, uh, they, they now had that legal, that authority in a sense, they had the powers there supporting them to put down heretics. <clears throat> Whether they did or not in that particular day or that particular year or for some years afterwards, they, they probably didn't exercise it for a while, but that the, the authority was there for them. That was given to them at that their particular time. And that marks the 1260 beginning. We also have the Third Council of Orleans that establishes Sunday as the day of the Lord and forbids field work on Sundays. So you have a Sunday law also taking place. At 533 was, uh, is when I mark the, uh, the operating of the last horn, the Ostrogoths being defeated by Byzantine forces in the Italian peninsula. Stephen? Yes? I have a question for you. Yes. Roll back just a little bit on the screen. What you were referring to before here on 538 AD. Mm -hmm. We have great historical points here, but I find it interesting that from the time that <clears throat> Constantine issued his decree honoring Saul Invictus, the sun god, in 321 mm -hmm. to 538, we have a period of 217 years. Mm -hmm. So we have the symbol of 217 or 21st day of the seventh month, July 21st. So how, how would we be able to apply that? Would they 321 be a beginning of the Sunday law and 538 becoming the, the formation? Like what we talked about in Daniel before? Um, can you do this in reverse? Can I do what in reverse? I'll just look at the dates in reverse instead of going forward. 538 into 530, then to 321. You, you understand what I mean? Not like looking at the numbers in reverse, but just the timeline in reverse as a symbol. That would be interesting. That is, I have what, I'm, what I'm saying is I'm going from 1798 is the time of the end. Right. But then going backwards to 538, then to 508, then to 321. And that would give us this, the uh, time of the end, the midnight, midnight cry, Sunday law. So in other words, that would give us the, the correct progression. Yeah. Okay. 
But as, as you were speaking of this, as you were looking at this, Stephen, it just struck me because I, I was led to look at the math. And when it showed me 217 between those two time periods, it was intriguing. I like yes. the way you, uh, I like the way that you're you're laying all this out because it it makes it so much more understandable. Yeah, two one seven we know is uh, thirty one times seven, isn't it? Is that right? <laughs> How about mind? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and we know that 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 was the. Uh, the week of Christ was seven mm -hmm. years, and you're 31 AD in the center. Right. Uh, and we know that uh, uh, that seven years is, is two periods of uh, 1260 in symbol. Mm -hmm. There, and we have here 1260, which is right in the center of another 12. You know, 538 is just sort of symbolizes that uh, 31 AD. Yeah. The center of two twelve sixty. That's that's what I'm kind of thinking in the week of Christ symbolism. That's why I'm saying going backwards too. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense at all, Stephen? Yes. In the week of Christ, we go backwards from five thirty eight mm -hmm. to seventeen ninety eight. So this is just looking at it backwards when it's backwards already. Mm -hmm. So it's forwards, but backwards. That, yeah. I could also, I haven't included it in this study, but we also understand that uh, Jeff done a presentation called the, the Pattern of Christ. Yeah. Where you have 30 years of preparation that uh, before Jesus is baptized, Mm -hmm. And then you have a 1260, and then mm -hmm. you have a death, a resurrection, an ascension. Mm -hmm. And here we have a 30-year preparation period. Um, so this is, in a sense, like a baptism here as well. Yeah. And then it's like you've got a 1260 uh, to, uh, to its death, to its deadly wound. And um, we know that it's going to be resurrected. And it's going to send to, uh, to be in the sort of uh, uh, the throne of the earth again. All the world will wander after the beast. So, um, so we have uh, also like the, the and thinking and bringing that in. You have Christ uh, when he was uh, eight days old. He would have been circumcised. Mm -hmm. So you would have. Um, like the circumcision is a type, type of a baptism. So there, it just sort of connects with that baptism of Clovis, Clovis mm -hmm. as well, uh, symbolizing that uh, circumcision on the eighth day. And you have here, it's actually 508. I don't know if I <laughs> can maybe draw that into it as well. So it just seems to connect. Uh, and then 606 to 632 is the beginning of the fifth trumpet. So Muhammad places the black stone in the Kaaba in 606 AD. And uh, this is relates to Revelation chapter 9. It's the star fell, fell from heaven. We relate that to Muhammad, but this year, black stone is reputed, reputed reputed to be um, a meteorite, which is like a, a, a stone from, a star from heaven, in a sense. Yeah, so it just becomes a symbol of, of Muhammad mm -hmm. because of the black stone. So we don't take the black stone as literally uh, what's being described in Revelation, but it, it becomes a symbol. Yes, and then uh, we have the Islamic conquest of, of the Arabian Peninsula, and then 632 to 782. And we have Abu Beggar's decree. It's a 150-year 150, 150 uh, prophecy that we find. And uh, there's, there's two periods, 150 years. And um, 
in verse 5, it mentions 150 years, or it mentions five months. And then in verse 10, it mentions five months. And the understanding is that these are two periods, two different um, 150 years. And you have Abbey Becker's decree, which is quite similar to Revelation uh, chapter 9, verse um, 3, I think, is it? Or 4, maybe it's this verse 4, I think. <clears throat> and then you have the Islamic conquest of the Middle East, Persia, North Africa, and the Iberian Peninsula. So that other uh, edict that uh, provided some nullification of the persecution was by Galerius, the Emperor Galerius, and it was the Edict of Surtica in 311. And uh, I have done, uh, marked it, this is 1,533 years then from that time to 1844. Uh, there was some... Uh, Diagram I'd connect that to. Um, I don't think I have it in this. So uh, they're just like, so Theodoric was supported by Zeno. And then the 508 date was, this is based upon a debate at paper by Danuta Shanzar called Dating the Baptism of Clovis. Uh, the Bishop of Vienne versus the Bishop of Tours. So um, she prefers, well, she kind of reckons Gregory of Tours is, is not really a reliable historian. Um, so that's the command. Well, Revelation 9 verse 4 says, And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, only those men who have not the seal of God on their forehead. And then you have the command of Abbey Becker concerning the conduct in war that resonates with that verse. It says, when you fight the battles of the Lord, acquit yourselves like men without turning your backs. Let not your victory be stained with the blood of women and children. Destroy no palm trees, nor burn any fields of corn, and cut down no fruit trees, nor do any mischief to the cattle, only such as you kill to eat. When you make any covenant or article, stand to it and be as good as your word. And as and as you go, you will find some religious persons who live in retired monasteries and propose to themselves to serve God that way. Let them alone. Neither kill them nor destroy their monasteries. And you will find another sort of people that belong to the synagogue of Satan, who have shaven crowns. Be sure that you cleave their skulls and give them no quarter till they either turn Mohammedan or pay tribute. And we, we connect this to like a discerning between those who uh, have to seal God and those who don't, uh, of uh, Revelation 9, verse 4. So the 150 years of Abu Beggar's decree um, is, goes to the first Islamic treaty with Eastern Rome. So that was in the year 782. So I'm just wondering whether you could tie in 782 there with um, Methuselah, because after Methuselah, he begat Lamech when he was 187, and then he lived 100, um, sorry, 782 years later, before the flood. So whether you could tie that into that 782 date, that's, a, that's, a, that's something that haven't just occurred to me. I could maybe look, at, look into that. Yeah, it's kind of interesting, the 780. Now, the thing about the 782, though, is um, we also have in connection with... Uh, So let me see if I can find it. On one of your charts that you did um, with the 1290, we had 782 years, you're saying. That's from 508 to 1290 as well. 
Yes. And then you had a reverse of that. You had yeah. 287. Yeah, and that's that's like July 18, 2020 symbol without the one in them. They have the digits of that. Yes. So 187 plus 782, 969. Mm -hmm. So... Um, So we have 632. So there must be some connection there with the 782. I just don't know how we would do that. But you'll figure it out. <laughs> okay, so we have then Revelation 9 verse 10. And this is dealing with the, the second 150 years. And this is more familiar to Adventism. And uh, this is a part of Josiah Litch's study, which he joined with the 391 years and 15 days. Um, so it connects this, we understand this is the first row. And it uh, begins with the Battle of Baphius in 1299 AD and goes to 1449. Um, then continuing on, just you just count continually, there's no real way mark in between, uh, no specific um way mark in 1449. Uh, but then you have uh, in 1449, well, actually, maybe we do. So <laughs> Constantine XI seeks Islamic approval before becoming the emperor of Eastern Rome. So wrong there. So beginning uh, the sixth trumpet and the second row. So we have that 391 years and 15 days. <clears throat> so we find out in Revelation 9, 13 to 21. And then uh, 1755 AD, we have the Great Lisbon earthquake. And there's uh, Revelation 6, verse 12, that's where it's mentioned. Yeah, and just going back to the 1449, so the idea is there isn't an event on July 27th, 1449. Right, okay. But July 27th, Gregorian is um, the 26th day of the fourth month. And July 18th, Julian is the 26th day of the fourth month. If I remember correctly, if that's how it mm -hmm. goes. So, so we still have this um, symbolism of these dates on that date, but we do have in that year Constantine the Eleventh uh, marking the event that would begin the Second World. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. And so, 1733, or sorry, uh, 1773. Uh, we have an Ellen White quote <clears throat> where she says that persecution of Christians almost wholly ceased. And this is in connecting to, connection with the statement in Mark uh, 13, verse 20, where Christ says, if those days, if, if it wasn't for those days being short, no flesh would be saved. And that's where she makes that statement in that context. Then you have seven years later, in 1780, the dark day, and then the moon becoming his blood uh, as well. And uh, you could maybe throw in a, the jewel, jewel chapter, whatever, he mentions that as well. And you can go back 2,500 years to that date, to, um, to 721. You see, when, when Joel prophesies that, we have our LMI statement that allows us to see a place, Joel, in history, um, where what the time period he comes in. And then we have 1793 AD uh, to 1797. Uh, we have the war on the two witnesses and the de Christianization in France for three and a half years. So this is in connection with Revelation 11, verse 7 to 10. 
and I have here some statements from Great Controversy. She says, according to the words of the prophet, then a little before the year 1798, some power of satanic origin and character would rise to make war upon the Bible. And in the land where the testimony of God's two witnesses should thus be silenced, there would be manifest atheism of the Pharaoh and the licentiousness of Sodom. This prophecy has received the most exact and striking fulfillment in the history of France. During the revelation of 1793, the world was for the first time heard an assembly of men uplift their united voice to deny the most solemn truth which man's souls receive or announce unanimously the belief and worship of the deity. And concerning these three and a half years, so the church and the Bible have been slain in France from November 1793 till June 1797. The three and a half years were ex expended and the Bible so long and sternly repressed before was placed in honour and was openly the book of free Protestantism. So that's a statement by George Crowley. Uh, the Apocalypse of St. John or the Prophecy of the Rise, Progress and Fall of the Church of Rome. And so that's quite a long title. So that's what he marks anyway. Um, I think I had looked into it. I think there was. Well, first of all, yeah, the Bible was, was really, uh, I think it was like banned almost in 1793 in November, and then there was some law in June around that time that they uh, they allowed it. It was became, they eased their, their ban against it. So our next day we have 1798. So this is uh, the Pope's exile from Rome. We have the deadly one of the papacy. I've marked five of the kings are fallen. And the USA becomes the sixth kingdom, and the one is of Revelation chapter 17, verse 10. And then we have the end of the 1260, 1290, and the 2520 for the time prophecies. That was the, the, the first 2520 of northern Israel. And then we have the arrival of the first angel's message. And uh, I've recognized this year as like structure based on this year comment by Great Controversy at page 306. Um, she says, a quarter of a century earlier, well, hold on, that was for the, I think I might have it here. Or well, maybe I don't. I thought I had added it. It looks like it's there in the note seven. Um, oh, this one here. A quarter of a century earlier, persecution had almost wholly ceased. Between those dates, according to the words of Christ, the sun was to be darkened. On the 19th of May, 1780, the prophecy was fulfilled. Um, see, that was the 306. Was the <laughs> yeah, I'm not too sure about her, but anyway, yeah, so you got 25 years, a quarter of a century earlier. I think she mentions uh, 25 years as well previously concerning the Lisbon earthquake. This year, she has 306.1. So I thought I had that on there. So anyway, you've got 18 years then um, to the persecution ceasing, and then you get seven years, and then you get 18 years again to the 1798. So you have this year's structure. So to me, that's a big, like a, you have a July 18 symbol there. And this, we know we have the week of Christ, 
um, that's been, um, in a sense, the papacy, the Antichrist copies the Christ, and uh, you have 1260, Christ ministers in person, and then 1263 as disciples, and then you have 1260 of pagan persecution, and then 1260 of uh, papal persecution. Also noting uh, 1798, um, going back to Israel, he's aged 147, and he prophesies over his 12 sons in uh, 1731 BC. And then you have 147 times 12, relating to the Israel's age and the sons, which will take us to 34 AD, and the end of literal Israel, so ancient Israel, in a sense, they close their probation. And then we have the 12 disciples, the foundation of the Christian church, uh, 34 AD. So you maybe say they were there 31 AD, whatever, but uh, they were maybe part of Israel still at their time. But this is really the Christian church now. They are the foundation of the Christian church. And then you have one, 147 times 12 again for spiritual Israel which will take us to 1798. And then you're, you're entering the 46 years of the, the Millerite uh, time period. So uh, 1831, I've marked uh, with Malachi 3, verse 1. And, um, so why do, you, why do you do the 147 times 12 again? What's the thinking? <clears throat> Well, it's the age of Israel, or Jacob, when he dies. Okay. And when he prophesies over his 12 sons. Okay, okay. So that gives us times 252 and the 7 times 252 as well. Um, but it's just using the different symbols. So we get the same period of time that we had figured out back in 2016, but using different numbers that come from 1731 B.C., the events there. Right. Okay. Interesting. So, uh, 1831, God begins to send William Miller to preach uh, the message of the second advent and prepare the way before him. And um, there's a long statement there from Bliss. I'll not read it all, it just goes into about uh, by William Miller. So it was called Go Tell It to the World, and he kind of said, God, okay, you have to. He sort of made a coffin, okay, you have to make a way plain, and then he, someone knocks at his door and so forth. So, um, so that ties in with Malachi 3, verse 1. He, he's there in scripture as a, the messenger of the covenant to prepare the way. Mm -hmm. And then 1833, you have November 13, the meteor shower. Uh, William Miller receives his preaching credentials also from the Baptist church, thus beginning um, the fulfilling of the typical Feast of the Trumpets, 10 prophetic days before the Day of Atonement, so a day for a year. So he's going to uh, say the Lord's going to come in 1843. So we have a 10-year period. And then I just have a statement there from uh, Bliss. It says, for the first two years, Miller preached or lectured simply as a layman on his own without any author authorizing papers. He had been expounding the word of divine truth in public to the approbation and edification of the church. This his home church desired to encourage and to approve and authorize. So on September 14, 1833, the Baptist Church of, Hampt of Hampton, of which Miller had been a member for 17 years, or ever since his conversion in 1816, solicited, unsolicited by him and unbeknown to him, and in conformity with the Baptist procedure, voted in regular church meeting 
to issue him a license to preach. So I have here a note, September 14, 1833, in the rabbinic calendar, equates to the first day of the seventh month, being the Hebrew date of the Feast of Trumpets. Uh, he wrote to his sister uh, two days later, informing her of his credentials. On the 16th of September, being the first day of the seventh month in the biblical calendar. So the Hebrew calendar there, uh, I should maybe say, well, so I have there the rabbinic calendar. So it's the first day of the seventh month in the rabbinic calendar. And that's, uh, we know the first day of the seventh month is the Feast of Trumpets. And then the, the blow the trumpets for 10 days before the Day of Atonement. So this is a sort of tying in with these here, um, with the fulfill, a fulfillment of that Feast of the Trumpets. The, the anti-type is uh, Miller receiving these credentials. So and then I know that it's two days later. So first of all, he didn't know this year meeting is, is happening and he doesn't know anything about it. It's on that rabbinic first day of the seventh month. And then it's um, two days later, he's writing to his sister informing her that he's got these credentials. And that is the first day of the seventh month in the biblical calendar. So it may have been that, uh, might have been two days before he actually got to hear that he had these credentials. And that there therefore marks the, and then he writes to his sister concerning that on that particular day. So that, that's just my, what I've looked into, into that there is that fulfillment. <clears throat> so 1840 AD, we have the 11th of August, and this is the end of the 391 years of 15 day prophecy. And it's an empowerment of the first angel's message. We have the day for a year principle being empowered. The Ottoman Sultan accepts the intervention of four Christian powers. And um, sort of ending the uh, second row, but the trumpet still continues until 1844. That's uh, the sixth trumpet. So 1842, we have the uh, beginning of the fulfillment of the writing of the vision of Habakkuk, chapter two. <clears throat> it may have been fulfilled in Habakkuk's time, but certainly the, we know that the, this is the, the latter day application. And then 1844, now we have the year 1843 in a sense being coming to an end, 1335. And that's the, the but there's yeah the end of the Jewish year equivalent to 1843. Then we have April 19, the arrival of the second angel's message and the beginning of the tarrying time. July 21st, midnight, and the parable of the ten virgins uh, fulfilled. So as you um, might quote there in the summer of 1844, midway between the time when it was first thought that the 2,300 days would end and the autumn of the same year, to which was afterwards found that they extended. The message was proclaimed in the very words of scripture, behold the bridegroom cometh. And then we have that message being empowered on August 15. And uh, Aram noted that the uh, 158, sorry, 15 and 8 for August being the eighth month. You multiply them together, you have 120. And so that symbolizes that 120 day period from the first day of the first month to the first day of the fifth month. And uh, which this here was, so it's typifying uh, 457, the beginning of the 2300 days, or, or in the sense the 457 is maybe typifying 1844, this date, 15th of August. And then we have October 22nd, the arrival of the third angel's message with the fulfillment of the 2,300 years and the 2520 prophecy of southern Israel or Judah. And then we have the fulfillment of the parable of the ten virgins, the sixth trumpet ends, and the blowing of the seventh trumpet begins. The cleansing of the heavenly sanctuary begins, uh, the judgment of the dead begins, and the beginning of the antitypical day of atonement. And we have that disappointment also, that will be fine in Revelation chapter 10. Uh, verse 
nine, I think, or nine or 10. And the half a chiasm there, uh, Mo William Miller's date, 158 BC, for the, um, uh, to do with um, Daniel 11, the, concerning the league with Rome. And then we have 666 years to 508. And then it was 1335 years previous to 158 that you have that the Israelites enter Canaan. And then from 508, you have 30, 35 years to 1843, which was Miller's date for entering the heavenly Canaan. And you have the symbol there that we have 2001 years as well there which we can maybe connect to 9-11 as a symbol. And this, this year, 2,300 years, we understand is a, like a jubilee cycle of 46 years. You have 49 times 46 years from 457 BC to 1798. And then like the jubilee, 46 years from 1798 to 1844. And then we have here the first and last prophetic dates that we find in the Bible. So we have the first biblical time prophecy of the 120 years of the flood. And we have this going ending in the, the end of the biblical prophetic time, which was the end of the 2,300 years in 1844, Christ centers most holy. And uh, so from that their time, uh, that 120 years we have to the flood, it's then 457 years to when you have the beginning of the 400 years of affliction, beginning with the mocking of Isaac, and that's in 1933 BC. And then from the flood, it's 1933 years to the 457 BC and the decree of Artaxerxes on the beginning of the 2300 years prophecy. So you have that uh, 457 and 1933 years as a span. And you also have them as dates as well. And then I noticed when you take the date of the first biblical time prophecy, uh, being 2510 BC, and just do the math, take away from the end of the biblical time prophecy, 1844, you have uh, just as a math, 666. Then uh, I notice from the first biblical time prophecy again, it's uh, 1,533 years to 977 BC. And this was the, the when the, the kingdom was divided. And this year period is bookended by two periods of 120 years. You have the 120 years from when uh, Noah was building the ark to the shut door and the flood. And then you have the 120 years ending that, um, that period, 1,533 years, with the, the anointing of Saul. You have Saul reigning 40 years, David 40 years, and then Solomon 40 years. Then the kingdom divides, and then you get 391 years and six months, or 0.5 of a year, uh, to the last king of Judah. And uh, you have the temple then being... Uh, destroyed in 586 BC in Jerusalem. And then I've lined this here up. This, this forms like a, a sort of mirror. Uh, when you take this here, 391, and uh, you have from the 27th of July, uh, 1449, to the 11th of August, 1840. Uh, we have this here, uh, Prophecy of Revelation 915. 391 years and 0.5 of a month. Then that's followed by 1,533 days to October 22nd, 1844, and the shut door there. So you, again, you have the end of biblical uh, prophetic time, and then which in this year, sort of 1533 then, uh, you have the first biblical time prophecy then 
So the beginning of that structure. And then it's just another entering, another kind of like we cherry on the top of that. You have the square root of 1533 is 391.15. Now it does go on, but um, but you have that 391.5 connected there just in that square root. And I had covered this here in the the first presentation of the table of history. So I'm not just going, maybe just to touch on it. With, uh, we have from 1798 to 1844, uh, 46 prophetic years is 1,000, or sorry, 16,560 prophetic days. And from the creation to the flood is uh, 1,656 years. So it's like just a, a tenth of that 46-year uh, prophetic period. And you have a shut door at the end of it. And then you have like a seven days for the flood. The shut door there, you have the seventh day Sabbath. And we're expecting a repeat of the flood and the sense the overflowing scourge at the end of the world. And the, the, the seven here, you have the end of the 2520 and 1798. And then you had the seven days of creation, beginning of that there, 1656 years. Now the shut door in both of those histories is October 22nd. Okay, okay. yes, thank you. Yeah. And is, are they both the 10th day of the seventh month? Yeah. Okay, that there as well. Yeah. So, yeah, 1850, we have uh, the fulfillment of the writing of the vision on tables. So 1843 was the beginning of it. And then uh, 1850, we have the other chart being, well, actually it was, I think it was towards, a, it was maybe published just near the end of that year or it was available anyway. I think it was maybe published in June. Or January? Did yeah, I think I think it was published actually in January. Mm -hmm. What I remember. Yeah, but probably much of it was done in 1850 anyway. And then 1860, we have uh, God's remnant people nominated uh, Seventh Day Adventists, and I've connected this to First Kings 16 verse 34, the death of the youngest John Herbert White. So that's a prophecy of um, being fulfilled of um, the rebuilding of Jericho. And the other kind of other the other aspect of that is uh, in six, 1863 we have the 2520 uh, on the 1843 and 1850 charts being set aside. And then we have the death of the firstborn Henry White. And then 1863 chart produced with a book. If connect, uh, was it um, Joseph Bates connected that to a fulfillment of Isaiah 30 verse 8? And then, um, so now we have the prophetic mirror, so we, we're familiar with that. You should also put, um, you should put in that uh, with 1 Kings 1634, you should put in Joshua. Um, 626, where it gives the prophecy. Yeah. I mean, people can find it, but they might not know what, what, where the prophecy is initially. Okay, thank you. Uh, so 1989 to 1991, uh, this is the um, fulfillment of Daniel 11, verse 40. And I have a review and herald there as well. I think that's the, the parable of the ten virgins being repeated. So we have here the first angel message arise for our time. So a repeat of history of so paralleling 1798. 
And then 2001, we have September 11th, uh, the great buildings of New York City being thrown down, fulfillment there of Ellen White Common and Review and Herald, July 5, 1906. And uh, we have the first Angel's Message Empowered, uh, the repeat of Millerite history. And the second angel arrives, according to uh, Ellen White's statement. And then the third woe begins. We've marked as well. Uh, we've seen a, a numeric connection there. Uh, if you 391.5 times 1840, which is the fulfillment of the second trumpet, equals 72360. Divide it by 360, day for year symbol gives you 2001. We've recognized the judgment of the living begins and the four winds are held until God's people are sealed. So uh, just a statement there from Christian experience. Um, the four angels. That there was some event, the four winds are about to be let loose and Jesus Christ, my blood, my blood, my blood. And uh, the, an angel then goes, is sent to say, hold, 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 until God's people are sealed. So this is uh, recognizing some event that happens before the Sunday law, in a sense. So this here fits that description. So this is a, a 1989 and a 1963 correlation of spans and dates with relation to John the Baptist. So Abram went forth from Haran in 1963 BC, and then you have 1989 years to when John the Baptist went forth in the spirit and power of Elijah to prepare the way of the Lord. And then taking the uh, Abraham or the Abram date, you apply 1963 years, inclusive reckoning, um, to, and that brings you to 1989, where you have someone is to come in the spirit and power of Elijah. So this is the quote here, I'll just make it a wee bigger, a bit bigger, because it's a bit small there. And then just scroll down. So she says, some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. The Jews tried to stop the proclamation of the message that had been predicted in the word of God. The prophecy must be fulfilled. The Lord says, Behold, I send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Then she says, Someone, somebody is to come in the spirit and power of Elijah. And when he appears, men may say, you are too earnest. You do not interpret the scriptures in the proper way. Let me tell you how to teach your message. So. Uh, this has been applied uh, to Jeff. So any comments in this here? Is this like a, a to me, this is maybe like a, a time structure, which would support this here uh, quote relating to Jeff. So any thoughts on that? Would you agree or disagree? Well, I would agree. Mm -hmm. Never seen this before, but it looks, way marks look good and time. Yeah, this is the first time I've, I've it's been presented. Okay. Right. Yeah, it seems it looks sound. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you have like a date span correlation there um, that would connect that quote to 1989. Um, and then we have uh, 1989, 1993, and 1996, and 
63, correlations of spans and dates with relation to the week of Christ. So when Abraham, before Abram left Haran, you've 1989 years to 27 AD, 1993 to 31, and 1996 to 34 AD. And then you just apply 1963 years from each of them. We have 1989, beginning of the time of the end. And then 1993, we have the publishment of prophetic timelines by Jeff. And then in 1996, we have the public, uh, yeah, the, the publishment of articles in our firm foundation magazine by Jeff Pippinger, later collated and published as the Time Land magazine. And this 1993 is again uh, inclusive reckoning, again connecting to Abram as a date in the span. And then the Sunday Law, 9-11 Myrrh. So from the Sunday Law in 538, that's 911 years to the second woe in uh, 1449. And then to the third, and the third woe then we have, this parallels the third woe being 9-11, uh, connected to that as well. So you have 9-11 collect, Sonia Law to the second row. We have a 9 11 then as a date in uh, 2001. And then we can that parallel then the coming of the Sunday Law in the future or not uh, very soon. This is something you just came across, across right? You just came across all this? Uh, yeah, just. Uh, I had a show that before, I think, um, or discussed, discussed it anyway. Okay. Um, some presentation, I think, with Theodore was doing, but um, I don't think you, we had it. That you didn't put it all in the lines like this here, though. You didn't complete it until, until now, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are just sort of uh, uh, looking at things and calculating, yeah. seeing if there's any uh, symbolism and times and spans and dates and so forth. Um, so this is a uh, one we had done last year, um, connecting uh, the two time periods, uh, connected with the league. So your ass myth says 161, which is correct. And um, William Miller gives us 158, which is correct to the references he has as well. Uh, so he, this is really when the league's being uh, designed or being agreed upon, and this is when really the league is showing evidence of its enactment that it has some effect in reality. And uh, we recognize that then it's uh, 2001 years to 1843, and then it's 158 years to 2001. And we now you have the 66 years and the 1335 years, which Muller here uh, mentions. He says, the Romans became connected with the league, with the Jews by a league. This may be found in 1st Maccabees, 8th and 9th chapters. Also the history of Josephus. Uh, then he says, when the Grecians ceased to rule over the Jews. So that's what he's marking. So that's what's taking place in 158. It's not actually the, the signing of the of the league here. Uh, Eurasmus says the Romans became directly connected with the people of God by the Jewish League in 161. So that's also correct. But the, the Grecians ceased to rule over the Jews in 158. And the last monarchy and Daniel's vision began. So... Um, I think this is the, the uh, he's, he's, this would be the Maccabean monarchy, I believe. So this was 158 years before the birth of Christ and 2000 years before the second advent of Christ uh, for by adding 158 plus 1842 equals 2000 years or two days. So he's connecting this here uh, to this year statement in uh, Hosea 
uh, he will revive us. And in the third day, that is the third thousandth year, which will begin in the year 1843, he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. So uh, again, if pagan Rome was to continue, as I have proved in a former lecture, uh, on le in former lecture one, on that point, 660 years, and Daniel is to stand on his law at the end of 1835, the taking away of the pagan mode of worship. So add 666 plus 1335 equals 2001. And we also recognize that uh, from 161, it's the 669 years. Um, I don't think there's any. Well, so, okay, so 666 plus 669 is 1335. So you just add them to, that gives you out 1335. And then from 508, 666 times 2 to 1840. And then it's 161 years to 2180 as well. And then 158 BC, you could also have this here structure. It's 2001 years to the 15th day of the eighth month in 1844. And then it's 150 years inclusive, reckoning to 2001. You could have it that way as well. So uh, I added this here and just there just before we, we came on. So this is like a recent uh, thing I've been looking at. Um, so when Methuselah was born, it's 187 years to when Lamech was born. And then it's 777 years to when he dies. And then it's uh, two times... 969, which was the age of Lam uh, Methuselah when he died. So that's 1938 years, and that's going to take you to nine, sorry, 457 BC. And then we have 700, 777 years to the decree of Constantine. And then that merged the hundred, then you can merge the 187 years there. Uh, from that, so it'll take you to 508. And we know there's 1,260 years there and takes you to 1798. But you also have uh, the age of Methuselah. You can throw out in this way, Mark, here will, will take you to 1290. And we, uh, Dwight brought out that the Edict of Expulsion uh, occurs on the 18th of July that year. And um, I, I sort of done a wee calculation and seen that from the 18th of July, they had 25, 20 hours to leave England. So, uh, it was like a period of 105 days, which symbolizes the, the 10th day of the fifth month. And then um, this is another one that uh, I've, I've just added. Uh, I don't think we've discussed it. Uh, I recognize that from the Babylonian captivity in 607 BC, you have 666 years then to 60 AD. And this is when uh, Paul was ship dragged on Malta. And we know there's a calculation there where they measure the fathoms. And if you add the 15 and the 20 fathoms, it comes to 25, 20 inches. That's also 70 yards. And at the beginning of these 666 years, we have the Babylonian captivity, which is 70 years or 25 or 25,200 days. So we have a 2520 symbol there on the 70. And uh, also notice that 607 is the 111th prime number. If you go back 111 years, it takes you to um, 718 BC which was, uh, there's no particular event to have there, but it's just uh, interesting that gives us 777 years then um, to the shipwreck. And we recognize that, that uh, it talks about midnight. And on the 14th night, they throw out uh, the bread. They have food to eat and 
as, uh, as a cardinal count, that would be 13 days or 18,720 minutes. So that would maybe connect with uh, the symbol of the 187 uh, there in uh, 718 BC. And I also have noticed, uh, uh, I should add it in here, um, we've seen that the 2520 uh, from 723 BC, the, uh, the captivity of Hosea. Now that 2520, if, if we break that up into the 15 fathoms and 20 fathoms, the the fifth the twenty fathoms is uh, one thousand four hundred and forty inches. So from seven twenty three BC, uh, one thousand four hundred and forty years uh, will take us to seven eighteen AD. So we have another connection there in, in a seventeen um, seventeen eighteen BC and a seventeen eighteen AD connection. Uh, with this here uh, 2520 symbol of on the shipwreck of Paul being divided. And then from 718 AD, it's then uh, 1,080 years will take you to 1798. And at the end of that 2520. So that was, um, I could maybe share that if you want it. <laughs> or okay. I can... Steve, uh, question here. So. So you're doing 723 BC to when? Um, to 1798 is 2520. Okay, okay, okay. But you didn't so, do anything else from 723. Um, hold on, I'll, I'll bring it up here because it's, it's handy. I've, I've got it here. Um, Is that okay? So um, it's yeah. being taken to count. Yeah, so the 2520 years. So you have that there symbol for max. You got the 1440 years there. And that takes you to 17, 7, 18, uh, 80. And then you've got the 1800 years. So you got a, a 17, 18 symbolized, or July 18 symbolized, and an 80 date. And uh, a BC there. Okay, so I see it just becomes a symbol. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so I don't have any event or anything, but just uh, it's just that uh, July 18 symbol. That's a, a date. Well, okay. Actually, uh, Okay, um, so with um, 723 BC, we also have 187 years from 723 BC to 536 to Cyrus's decree. So 187 shows up there. Um, but yeah, I thought there might be something else. Yeah, I see. Okay, so that's, yeah, there's some other things that we could do, I guess, but uh, I'd have to work them out. So I'll put them together. <laughs> Um, okay. um, do you know anything about the Battle of Alia? Is that in 718 BC? No, it was 390 oh. BC. Oh, 390? 
Um, I think I had Logan Dirt, actually. Okay, it's just it's July 18th, 390 BC. I think I had noticed that before, yes. It is connected with the sack of Rome by the Gauls. It's the Battle of Alia River. Anyway, I just thought there might be some connection there between some of these dates. We yeah. could probably find more connections, but thanks. That was very interesting. Um, just another question, kind of a bit unrelated, but um, when we deal with um, the number 364, there's 364 days in a, um, a balanced year, that is 52 weeks is 364 days, right? You familiar with that? Um, yes, 52 weeks. Yeah, which is, of course, 18720. So, so if we take the number, yeah, I'm just going to, can I share my screen here? You can, yes. Something I was working on. So if I take 18720 weeks, I get this number. And that number of days in prophetic time is 364 years. But there is also the idea that there's 52 weeks in, in a, a year of 364 days. So some people use a year of 364 days. Um, it's just another way of looking at a year because it's 52 weeks. Mm -hmm. But... I never thought of using 364 years anywhere. So just, just something to put into your thought process. But that's in prophetic years, right? So that's taking, again, 18720 times 7 gives me 131,040 days, which is the number of... Uh, if I use prophetic years, if I divide that by 360, I get 364 years. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know if you've ever looked at that before. Yeah, I'm thinking about Enoch. He lived to 365. So he yeah. lived, he had 364 years of, um, so, and then he had, so he had 18,000. 720 days times seven plus 360. Okay. Symbolically, he lived. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So that would be one way of looking at it. Okay. And then the, did you see the wee thing I had uh, done for uh, Enoch and Lamech? That e Enoch, uh, he lived when, when Moses was born. Um, uh, Lamech was 182, but okay. uh, Enoch, he, he was 400 and 434 years old at that their time, even though he had been taken. Now, he was taken when he was 365, but he was still living. So, yeah. he, was four, so he was 434 years old when Noah was born. Okay. And uh, we know that 434 years is 62 times 7. Yeah. And Lamech, uh, he was 182, which is 26 times 7. So you have at 62 and uh, 26, like type mirror, for when Moses was born. But not Moses, Noah. I keep saying yeah. <laughs> Now, now, did you did you look at this uh, Palmani book yet? Uh, I watched your presentation oh, okay. uh, uh, last night, 
uh, this morning. Yeah. Um, and I uh, heard you go over some of it. I haven't uh, read it all or anything. Yeah. But... You should take a look at it. I mean, he does get some things wrong in his chronology, but it doesn't affect his basic premise. Um, and he does some things that don't make sense. But uh, I just thought it was interesting because um, Iran pointed out that June 9th, 1863, and it's June 9th. That's the dividing line from when we don't have time setting in our movement and we do, right, in 2018. Yes, 177 days we have time setting for. So from June 9, um, 9 2018, it's uh, 776. 770 days then until July 18. Okay, so you're saying, um, so if I go to June 9th, 2018, you're saying. <laughs> and then I'm going to count to July 18, 2020. Or, or, yeah, so July 18, 2020. So 770 days. Okay. That's interesting. Yes. So we have time setting, in a sense, for 770 days. Yes. Okay. That's interesting. Okay. So... So I just think it's interesting. It's June 9th, 1863. Um, so I know there's a lot of, lot of things that you've gone through here, and there's probably more we're going to find as time goes on uh, that will help us. Yeah, so if I go from Ju June 9th, 1863 to July 18th, 2020, it's 157 years, one month, one meet week and two days, which is 57,383 days. So it's uh, a little longer than 770. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thanks a lot. Any other questions anyone has for Stephen? He's got to go to bed. Yeah, just uh, Aran brought up two points there, that uh, the two periods, 150 days. Or five months, so yeah. we have them in the flood. Yeah, it's pretty interesting at this point. Oh. Okay, well, you can close with prayer, Stephen, if you want. Could you close for me? Okay. Please. Um. Dear Father in heaven, we are so thankful for the Sabbath and um, for the light that you give us for our path, for our feet. We're thankful for each person who is searching these things out, who is seeking light. And we pray, Lord, that um, you can continue to bless Stephen and all those studying truth. Help us, Lord, to follow and obey you in all things. Be with us now well, through the rest of the Sabbath or the time that we have till we meet again. And we pray that your Holy Spirit can work upon our hearts. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat>